Hey guys, welcome to Game Pass Speed Dating, the series where I try the latest Game Pass releases, try them out for about an hour, and then give me a f give you guys my first impressions along with the rating on a scale from fail on the date to propose immediately. From games that sweep me off my feet to games that make me want to ghost them, let's explore the highs and lows of the Game Pass dating scene. So get ready for some awkward moments, some first date jitters, and maybe even ha even ha and maybe even happily ever after. Let's get started. So today we're going to be playing Fuga Melodies of Steel 2. Now I played the previous game a little bit, not a whole lot, maybe about like 45 minutes or so. So I'm expecting the sequel to be another like turn-based combat game where you have these anthropomorphic cats inside of a giant tank. And while there is a previous story recap, let's go ahead, just jump into the sequel and see how it goes. So there we go. So yep, no save data yet. Clean start going into this pretty blind. When saving, okay, it's standard, don't turn off the game when it's saving, that's the icon to look for. It's alright. Alright, I was right, there are giant tanks in this game. No. Silent children. Alright, doesn't seem like the most offbeat start, or upbeat start. So we got this child teleporting to the chair. It can't be true. How could this happen? Okay, that doesn't look like a good sign. Well, this was a pretty quick game, but you know, not every date's gonna be a long one. Okay, we gotta take two. No, May! To be honest, I don't know which tank was ours. I mean, I don't think either of them are doing too well in this battle. So, right, a pretty ominous and, for me, confusing opening, but... Sometime earlier. Okay, so that's us. See, it's very damaged and, like, on its last legs, but I thought it was, like, corrupted, so I was like, okay, it looks pretty evil. Like, the good guys, they don't, they don't usually have these, like, red lines that are glowing, of, like, of, around them. How far could the Terranists have gone? It's not like something that huge could stay hidden out of sight. Mm. Could say the same about the sunk of junk. Man, it feels like a bad dream being in here. Mm. I never would have imagined we'd be chasing the Terranists in a Berman tank. The children chase tirelessly, endlessly after the Terranists. The same Terranus they used to save their loved ones in the fight against Ur Berman. Their pursuit is aided by the Tarascus, a Berman tank they once subdued themselves. Can't this thing go any faster? The Tarascus is currently running self-repair protocols, so its functionality is limited. Okay, I feel like that's a way to say, hey, you're not as powerful at the start of this game as you were at the end of the previous game, but, you know, for us, that's fine. Increasing speed any further would be a great risk. The trail of tracks left by the treads of the Terranus yet remain. Following them will offer a high probability of catching up to it. His voice still gives me the creeps. Picking up a reading ahead that does not match the Terranus' signature. Its estimated size is that of a Berman tank. Advancing will almost certainly result in hostilities. I have a little bit of a, a feeling about that might happen. How are there still Berman tanks in Gasco? They should they all should have crawled home with their tails between their legs ages ago. Don't waste time thinking about that now. Battle stations, everyone. Enemy tank approaching firing range. All personnel prepare for battle. Alright, you know, I don't think this is going to be a very long battle, but we gotta do it. They're firing on us. Oh, what is that thing? Hmm. It appears to be modeled after the tanks of the Vermin Imperial Army. Though its make is entirely different. Oh, okay, you can tap space to kind of scroll it faster. That's good to know. It is unmanned. The tank seems to be moving autonomously. What the heck is it? I don't know what it is, but I know we'll lose the Terranus if we don't send it packing. 
Let's do this. Alright, so very basic battle to get us started. Destroy your enemies with the three gun turrets on the giant tank Tarascus. Alright. Killed and replaced at a gun turret will attack with their skilled weapon type. Select a grenade launcher. Alright, seems pretty straightforward. And 100% chance? I like those odds. Let's go ahead and do an attack. And I guess grenade launcher again. And now we have a cannon. Alright, it said high power but low accuracy, but I'd say 100% feel pretty good about that. Man, I thought this game was going to be a challenge. It's not like I'm going to get blown up or destroy the, all of us in like 20 seconds. I mean, I got an S rank. I think the odds of that are pretty low. In the results, experience points and items can be obtained according to the outcome of the battle. Win the battle quickly to avoid receiving damage and earn more experience points. I mean, I do like last game to build, so... I mean, no pun intended. We managed to beat it. Everyone okay? Yeah, looks like the Tarascus pulled through for us. It looks like... It looks just like the Tyrannus. It's, uh... The Tarascus was manufactured for the purpose of controlling the Van... The Vanergind. According to my memories, I oversaw its creation during the invasion of Fiasco. Huh? Okay. Hmm. You say like you're talking about someone else. It was all your fault, Hax. Shoulder the blame. I have his memories and knowledge, but I myself am not the one you know as Hax. I am merely an artificial intelligence assimilated with the core of the Vanergand that happens to be here. I'm glad they explained that long because I was like, I don't know. Okay, there's some guy on the radio? Alright. And it's like, oh, he's actually a computer. That makes a bit of a difference. So we're kind of like Gene back on the Terranus? I wish Sox was here. He'd be able to explain everything. Oh. You got that right. You gotta hurry and catch up to them. Oh. I don't get it. How do we even end up in this situation? I guess we're about to see how we ended up in that situation. A year has passed since the armistice was signed between Berman and Gasco, bringing the war to an end. I mean, it doesn't seem very peaceful. So we got a montage of kids doing kid things. The children, no longer embroiled in bloody conflict, had each gone their separate ways to enjoy the peaceful lives they fought for. Alright, seems like pretty, you know, pretty nice, laid back. One day, the children received letters from the Gasco army requesting they convene in Pharaoh, the new capital city. So they got drafted into this war a year after it ended, 24 hours earlier. Pharaoh, central metropolis of Gasco. Presidential residence plaza. So, is that basically just the White House? Mm. It's been a year since the fighting ended. Yeah. Glad to see you're doing well. Same goes for all of you. I wish Jin and Wapa could be here too. Jin's got his hands full overseeing the factory he inherited. And Wapa's been out roaming the open road. No one can get a hold of her, it seems. Figures. That certainly sounds like what they'd be up to. <laughs> it's been forever, Sheena. How's your mom doing? I've been worried about her. Oh, she's doing much better now. Looks like Chicken Hack might be coming late. <laughs> I can't wait till everyone shows up. While the children were chatting and reminiscing, Lieutenant Muscat of the Gasco army arrived to offer her gratitude. We appreciate each of you coming all this way. I hate to interrupt your reunion, but would you mind coming with me? Oh, no problem at all, you Lieutenant Muscat, was it? That's right. Sorry to get right to it, but there's something I'd like you to see. Though I imagine it might not stir up the greatest of memories for you all. Okay, another tank. Why would we need another tank? It's peacetime. It's not like there's going to be another war going on soon. The children follow Lieutenant Musket to a large depot. Within the depot, the steel behemoth that had seen the children through the war loomed silently. Is that the Terranus? Now that I think about it, I think it might be pronounced Terranus, since it's all A's, but... The present time. Pretty basic cockpit. Hostile tank approaching. Extinguisher matches that of the previous autonomous tank. 
I feel like there should be a seat in there at least. Another one? Everyone, battle stations. Roger that. This is the route progression scheme screen. Various effects will occur when the Tarascus reaches an event waypoint. Battles occur at this waypoint. The number on the upper right represents the number of consecutive battles. The Tarascus's HP is restored at this waypoint. There are other waypoints with various effects, so please check the help screen for more details. Alright, so you can press tab to see help. For now, let's go ahead and advance. Alright, so we got two battles going on. Let's see. The timeline at the top of the screen displays the action order. The icon displayed under an enemy's HP designates its weakness. Its weakness is a timer. Attack with a weapon of the same color. Alright, so grenade launcher is yellow. So we can attack either of these. If you attack with weapons of the same color like this, the enemy's action order will be delayed. So... Let's go ahead and delay the other one. Okay, actually didn't make it to where it we get another turn before then, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and I mean target the first one, I guess. Okay. So yeah, they're gonna get one attack in, but I have a feeling they're not gonna get another chance. All right. You know, second battle of the game, still in the tutorial, but doing pretty well. Okay, we got some flying enemies. Aerial enemies have a high evasion rate. Weapons with high accuracy are effective against these enemies. Let's switch placements on the formation screen. So press Q. So I guess now we can swap out weapons. Here you can see the abilities of each of the children placed at the three gun tur turrets. This is information about the top gun turret. The cursor is placed on the attack position. Weapon attribute effects and damage depend on the abilities of the attacker. Now let's switch Chick, who is currently selected, with another child. Press space. The icon displayed above each child's head represents their weapon. Select Kyle with the cursor and press space. Okay. Like this, the gun turret's attacker has been switched to, ty to Kyle. The machine gun used by Kyle has a high accuracy and is effective against aerial enemies. Now let's switch Sheena with hack. Select Sheena with the cursor and press space. So, her, swap for them out. That person. Now there are two children with machine guns and one with a cannon. That's a weird sentence to hear in a, in a game, but here we are. Hey, oh, hey Moy, how's it going? Now, okay. While switching placements on the formation screen, you can press E anytime to check the enemy description. Now, let's exit the formation screen. So let's return to battle. Let's... Okay, formation will be locked for three turns. So yeah, makes sense. You can't just swap them out every single turn to fit what you need at that moment. Let's attack the aerial enemy with the machine gun. So machine gun against the flying enemy. And let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and delay this guy. Okay, again, didn't delay it to like so far behind that it won't get an attack in, but... Let's see, 30% chance of hitting, that's not great. Alright. But yeah, with the machine guns now, we'll be able to take out both of these. So. Man. I was like, that's going to be the last hit we take this battle, but could have done with the weaker attack. And finally, there we go. Yeah, took it took a bit of damage, but honestly, I don't think there's really anything we could have done to avoid that. Oh, I guess we could have done both attacks on the same enemy at first, rather than the delaying the other one, so we would get attacked one fewer time, but we'll keep that in mind. Hostile tank no longer detected, reverting alert level to normal. Thanks, Hax. Kind of feels weird to, take, to thank him like that. You're not wrong, it's just, well... We need to rely on this tank if we're ever going to catch up to the Tyrannus. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. We have to stop the Tyrannus no matter what. Alright, another flashback. Got a lot of people working on that thing. 23 hours earlier. 
Giant Depot, Pharaoh. So to get you caught up, Moy, I am jumping into the second game of the series. There's a lot of cat kids in a giant tank, so if you're confused, so am I. Why is the Tyrannus here? I never thought I'd see it again. Looks like it's primed and ready to get right back into the thick of things. Wow, I almost forgot how big it is. It's huge. It certainly looks a little less beat up than it did a year ago. Like it removed the scratches on its hole all on its own. I feel like all the guys working on this are just like, Seriously kid, we do all this work and you think the tank's doing it itself? What a strange tank. The reunited children are brought before the Tyrannus, their erstwhile ally on the field of battle. The tank was covered in scaffolding, as if undergoing a thorough survey. As you can see, we've launched a thorough inspection of the Tyrannus, but the door is sealed tight and we can't get in. Do you have any idea why that might be? I don't think any of us even knew it could, knew it could even be locked. That's right, I don't think anyone besides us has ever been in the Tyrannus. Hmm, let me take a look. Huh? What's that sound? I, I guess it's open now. I see. Perhaps the Tyrannus only allows entry to those it deems worthy. So it's a bit of a Molnir situation. Now that the door is open, we can finally continue our inspection within the vehicle. Alright, we got this old cat coming in. At that moment, a well-dressed felon Nico gentleman and the young lady joined them. They appeared to be father and daughter. The man peered out from under his bandaged face while the girl fidgeted restlessly with restlessly behind him. Alright, so we got a new pair to the team. So we can finally survey the interior, can we, Canal? Or, I mean, Lieutenant Musket. Indeed, thanks to the children paying us a visit. Allow me to introduce you all. This is President Shane Muscat, my father. Wait, you're the president's daughter? I had no idea. <laughs> I suppose I never mentioned it. And this is my sister, Vanilla. <laughs> wow. I feel like that'd be a little bit of a rough name to have, to just feel like, yeah, she's like the plainest person you can imagine. Allow me to offer my heartfelt gratitude for making the long journey here. Thank you, one and all. Bonita. Come now, Vanilla. Introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Vanilla. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Nice to meet you too. I'm Malt and this is my sister, May. <laughs> Hiya, I'm May. I'm Hannah. Malt and I are both from Petite Mona. Pleased to meet you, Vanilla. <laughs> Pleased to meet you both, Hannah and May. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to get in the way any more than I have. Back to my duties. Are you staying, Vanilla? <laughs> yes, Father. <laughs> Alright then. I leave you in your hands, Lieutenant. Understood. <laughs> Nodding in affirmation, the President took his leave of the depot, his gaze never leaving the Tyrannus. So is he just like walking backwards out of the depot, just like locked on to the tank? Hannah, May, Boron, Sox, and Brits were the first to enter the Tyrannus. They began preparations to survey the interior. While Malt, Kyle, and Sheena remained outside to answer Lieutenant Muscat's inquiries, Chick and Hack arrived late. I just realized, if they can't get into the tank, how did they transport it to this depot? Sorry for showing up late. Long time no see, everyone. The Tyrannus. Are you all taking it for a joyride? What? No. At that moment, something peculiar happened. The doors of the Tyrannus all suddenly closed tight with no warning. What the? Lieutenant Muscat, we can't open the doors. Huh? Is anyone in there besides the children? No, we are still readying the equipment. Only the children are inside. In the midst of the commotion, each turret on the terrain is stirred and made ready to fire. They all trained their aim straight ahead on the entrance to the depot. This is bad. Quickly, everyone get away from the Tyrannus. Wow. The kids show up and like within like 10 minutes we're destroying the whole depot. As soon as the lieutenant issued her warning, the Tyrannus opened fire. The doors of the depot were blown apart and fragments of the ceiling and walls collapsed as they lost their supports. Alright, we're getting out of here. Road trip time, baby. The terrain has slowly advanced out of the depot, its turrets never ceasing their fire. Alright. The tank continued its exodus unimpeded, sharding apart every Gasco tank and structure in its path. 
Hina, where's everybody else? They're on the Tyrannus. May, everyone. Father. Vanilla's anguish cry echoed throughout the ruined depot. Okay, that's actually a pretty good, like, intense drawing for a stop, like a. This type of motion comic type of cutscene. Her gaze was fixed on the government state house where the president had returned, now consumed in a sea of fire. You know, I think they could have renamed Fuga Melodies to Steel 2. That's a bit of a mouthful to just kids commit war crimes and, you know, just see uh, what type of what type of audience and reaction that gets. Father, his office, is he really in there? How could this have happened? I'll mobilize the unit and search for the president. Malt, you and the others get Vanilla somewhere safe. Understood. Come on, Vanilla. Follow us. Okay. They're like, how did, how did, how could this have happened? It's like, you let kids into a tank and left them alone. You don't even understand what, how the tank works. The children hunkered down near another depot that had escaped the inferno caused by the Tyrannus. They each took a deep breath and collected themselves before discussing their next plan of action. I mean, you're gonna hide in a depot? You just saw a tank hates the depots. It, that's the first thing it destroyed when it came alive. Is everyone alright? Anyone hurt? I think we're okay. We need to hurry and chase after the Tyrannus. Hannah and the others are still inside. Right, but how are we supposed to catch up to it? Hmm. This can't be. Father, I'm not letting this happen to you. Vanilla, are you okay? You want to follow that tank, don't you? Um, yeah, that's right. If we had a way to chase after it, we'd set out right away, but... Leave that to me. I think I might know a way. Is it gonna be... Is it another tank? No way. Is this... The Tarascus? Vanilla led the others to a depot that held the Tarascus, the enemy tank they once bested on the battlefield. Man, there's a lot of depots in this city. The children were mortified to see their former nemesis before them. Why is the Tarascus here? I thought we'd destroy this hunk of junk. The wreckage was gathered for further study, and before long it had fully repaired itself. Okay, oh, wow. Apparently the tanks actually do heal themselves. At least, that's what my father in the military said. They think it might even be fully operational again. I see. Well, the army's got its hands full at the moment. I don't see anyone else around. Hey, you sure about this? I am. We have to stop the Tyrannus and save everyone. You're right. I'm going too. Me too. Me three. Was that the same kid? Alright, move out. Filled with determination, the children made a run for the Tarascus. But they heard Vanilla cry out from behind them. Please take me with you. It's probably better you stay here. We're setting out to do something really dangerous. Apologize to Lieutenant Muscat for us using the Tarascus without permission, would you? Very well. Be careful out there. Don't worry, we will. Yeah, I'd be silent too if they're like, don't worry, we promise nothing's gonna go wrong, we're just gonna use this tank that we don't know how to use, we're right after some other kids used another tank and run on a rampage causing this whole thing. Incredible. It's set up almost exactly the like the Tyrannus. We should be able to make do with this. Including no chairs. And it looks like it's ready to go. Alright everyone, after the Tyrannus. Let's go! I feel like they're alone too enthusiastic during like such a travesty. Like this is gonna be a day in the history books of like not a good day. The scaffolding penning the great beast collapsed, shattering as its steel treads clambered over their remains. Piloted by the children, the Tarascus plowed through the sea of fire and rubble after the Tyrannus. Alright, title card again. The present time. I know the Tarascus isn't running at full capacity yet, but we'll never catch up to the Tyrannus if we don't get a move on now. Please, stay safe, everyone. Man, I was like, the names of the two tanks are a little too similar with Tyrannus and Tarascus, that I thought it was like saying the same tank twice. I was like, that doesn't make sense, but apparently they are slightly different. So now we can heal up. Okay, I guess you just run over scrap metal and that does it. And we got a repair kit and an energy cell. Now to fight one enemy. Alright, one of these small tanks again. This is the enemy's armor rank, which represents their defense power. 
This enemy has a high armor rank, which makes it difficult to damage, so let's use Kyle's skill. Select piercing shot from the skills command to attack. This skill lowers the enemy's armor rank by one. Alright, piercing shot. Three hit attack three hit attack with one armor rank to decrease on an enemy. Let's see what it does. Alright, that did do what it said. The enemy's armor rank has been lowered. In exchange for consuming SP, you gain the upper hand in the battle by using skills well, so give it a shot. SP can be recovered at recovery waypoints along the route, and also by clearing chapters and using recovery items. Okay. So... Uh, hmm. Oh! That only took one SP and got 50, so it's like, yeah, let's go ahead and do that again. I mean, otherwise I don't think we're going to be able to do a whole lot of damage with the machine gun. But, let's see, skills. Two hit attack on an enemy. Yeah, seven SP. That's pretty expensive. So let's go ahead and just do cannon. Oh yeah, I forgot that's its weakness anyway. So... Um, let's do one machine gun and see if that... Okay, we might be able to finish it off. Alright, cool. We were able to save one SP. Technique was a B. What else were we supposed to do? Just burn through SP the whole for that? whole battle. So we got some iron scrap for our efforts. Now let's keep going. We're gonna get some health and some blue stuff. Oh, okay. Oh man, we could we totally could have burned through our SP then. So rusty breach and then now two enemies. Let's see. Let's go ahead and change up our configuration because we're very heavily built around fighting flying enemies, and I'm not sure how often those actually come up. So that's looking a bit better. Let's go ahead and lock that in. And then grenade launcher. And then... Yeah, let's go ahead and do another attack on this guy. Hmm. I guess that's going to increase his defense when it does it, but let's go ahead and delay this guy. And then now, we should be able to finish him off and do another attack on this guy. Let's see how that goes. Okay, yeah, that didn't do a whole lot. So, um, seems like it's going to be worthwhile to use some piercing shots. Okay, not 7 SP though. Let's go ahead and do cannon attack. Okay, and then skills, yeah, don't need health recovery, and then what's her skill? Okay, alright, that was a whiff. Man, that did a lot of damage. So, another attack, dang. Okay, hopefully this lands. Alright, cool. So now we can continue on. Uh, okay. Let's swap it out to the flying... To the machine guns. So equip that. Equip that. And... Yeah, I guess we might as well have this red cannon rather than the yellow ones. So let's lock that in. So... What's their skill? Okay, piercing shot. So machine gun... Let's go ahead and delay this guy and see if we can get another attack in. Yes. Okay, that should have finished off the other one, but live and learn. So, yeah. Hopefully if we hit, we can save an attack. Okay, never mind. So yeah, we're going to take a bit of damage this battle, but it's you're not going to get through all these fights without taking any damage, so just got to accept it sometimes. And then now, let's finish off this guy. And... Alright. Yep, this should wrap this fight up. There we go. Yeah, that did take quite a few turns. Okay, A rank, that's a little bit better than I was expecting, honestly. But we leveled up, so that's good. Let's go next. 
next. Alright. It's quite a few level up screens to get through. And let's go ahead and advance. We'll get some money. Got some a carrot, egg, and meat. Okay, intermission. <laughs> the Tarascus the Tarascus looks just like the Tyrannus, right, Malt? I guess that's why driving it is like slipping back into a warm glove. I'm surprised it still works after we destroyed it a year ago. We'd better run a check and see which parts are fully operational. This is where you can upgrade the tank and interact with the children. As you progress with the story, various facilities and functions can be expanded. Hack, go explore the Tarascus a bit for us. Me? I mean, sure, yeah, I can do that. It seems odd that's like, this is a pretty high priority thing, and you're just assigning it to the kid. Select Hack from the character switch screen. So, let's switch characters, go to Hack, and confirm. Control Hack to explore the interior of the Tarascus. Alright, we got this little... Okay, so it's 2D, you can't like go forward and away from the camera, but walk around. It seems we have a rod we might use for scrap fishing as well. Peculiar, don't you think? A frightening instrument of war with room for a fishing spot. Oh! They can... By scrap fishing, you can obtain various materials to upgrade the Tarascus' weapons and HP, SP in the workshop. Okay, I thought like, fishing for actual fish, and I was like, this doesn't really make sense. Although, fishing for scrap from a tank isn't something that I'm like, yeah, that's logical, that's a thing. Workshop looks basically the same as the one on the Tyrannus. With the right materials, I bet we could fix this baby up right. You can upgrade the Tarascus' weapons, HP, SP, and more by collecting the necessary materials. Let's go ahead and talk to her. Kitchen looks good and ready to go too. If we need some cooking done, you know which girl's the one. The one to cook up something awful, maybe. Got him. Hey, I can tell you're thinking something mean, you know. By making meals with gathered ingredients and eating together, the children's abilities and resistance will temporarily increase. So what's the verdict on the Tarascus? This thing's so much like the Tyrannus, it's almost scary. I'm not scared of nothing, though, just so you know. Uh-huh, I bet. Select Malt from the Switch character screen. So there he is. Since the character in control gets the most experience, try switching them as needed. The intermission will now conclude. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue advancing. So we got some health and SP. Okay, back to full health and SP on both. So, loading screen. Approaching target objective, Tyrannus. Now entering combat range. Finally, the children had the Tyrannus within their sights. The air was thick with tension as they approached the rogue vehicle. What should we do? If we just keep chasing them, this will never end. For now, let's just worry about closing the distance. The Tyrannus are rotating and assuming an offensive position against us. It's doing what now? Maybe they don't know that it's it, us in here. We don't even know if Hannah and the others are controlling it at this point. Yeah, maybe they're just trapped in the Tyrannus. That must be it. There's no way Hannah and the others would, would ever do anything like this. Then who the heck is controlling the dang thing? Alright, so we got attacks. That's not a great sign. Incoming fire from the Tyrannus detective. Now activating defensive shields. No way. Are they really firing on us? What should we do? Incoming transmission from the Tyrannus. Displaying feed via the monitors. Are they all possessed by the tank? What? It's Hannah and the others. But I sense something wrong with them, like they're not themselves. Alright. Hold on, did Mage just disappear? The Tyrannus seems to have engaged its teleport functionality. Uh, tanks can do that? What the heck does that mean? Okay, so I'm not the only one confused by that is a function that transfers any onboard personnel to another location instantaneously. 
I didn't realize the Trance could do anything we didn't already know about. This is the sequel, baby. Things are going to get crazy. Alright, so she teleported into the chair. Look, it's May. Where is she? Could that be... The Soul Cannon Chamber? May, no. What should we do? The Tyrannus has drawn closer and is ready to fire on us. Okay, so we gotta do this battle. I thought we could stall the Tyrannus by attacking it, but I didn't realize May would be in the Soul Cannon Chamber. If we engage in combat, it might fire the Soul Cannon. We can't fight against it. Soul Cannon standby, loading energy into Soul Cannon Chamber. Proceeding with Soul Cannon firing sequence, auto targeting mode on. No, is it really going to fire the Soul Cannon? Initiating Soul Cannon countdown. So, real fast, I'm going to go ahead and lower the audio of the game. It's a little loud for me. So, I'm going to do that in the volume mixer. I'm just going to do, do it this way so you don't have to see me go through the settings. And then move that over here. At Fuga. Let's do. Oh, yeah, that sounds better. So, alright, back to the game. Initiating Soul Cannon Countdown. What should we do? It's gonna fire. Three. We can't just attack it. Everyone's in there. It's no use. We can't attack. Everybody on the defense. Selecting defend will reduce damage for one time until their next turn. Okay, I'm gonna. Raise the volume a little bit now. It's a little bit too quiet, but we should be able to find a happy medium pretty quickly. So, volume mixer. Let's increase the melody of the steel. There you go. Alright. Selecting defend will reduce damage for one time until their next turn. Let's go ahead and do it. Alright. I mean, let's go ahead and get everyone to. Alright, that actually was pretty effective. Two. I don't want anyone to get hurt, but if we don't fire on them, May's going to. Alright, so just continue defending. One. If we attack them, we risk injuring Hannah and the others. Dang it, what should we do? We can't stop the Soul Cannon. Reading the accumulation of extreme levels of energy, deploying the mana, the mana garm to intercept. Okay, I feel like they're just making up words now. Okay, there's so many times I'm like, man, this is confusing, but they're just going with it, and then Malt's confused. I'm like, okay, I'm not alone here. Mana garm, what's that? Is that giant cannon on the side of the Tarascus? Don't fire! All our friends are still aboard the Tyrannus. Both the Tarascus and personnel aboard will suffer extensive damage if I do not launch a preemptive attack. The order to stand down is denied. Alright. Malt, I think he's really going to fire on them. Is this our only option left to protect everyone? Do we really have to resort to this? The Manogarm is Tarascus' devastating ultimate weapon. It can only be used once every battle. The shadow you select will be temporarily knocked out due to a small amount of their energy being used. Alright. I didn't know so many tubes in our tank. Oh, that's theirs. No! May! Alright, classic laser beam against laser beam. Let's see who wins. Warning. Damage output from the Manogarm will not be enough to halt the enemy's attack. Imminent attack incoming. Two seconds to Soul Cannon impact. Whoa. Okay. Not very good for us. This can't be happening. Uh, 
Wait, where am I? Am I dead? May, that's right. What happened to everyone? They're not here, as a matter of course. Should, surely you don't wish for them to meet their end thusly. Who are you? I'm amazed that someone like you could enter this place. You seem to have abilities not unlike those of Jean. You know Jean? Tell me who you are. It would appear you have reached an untimely end, a most undesired fate indeed. To alter your fate, you will need to make another choice. Malt has been endowed with a mysterious ability that will allow him to rewind time and alter the outcome of battle. To use this ability, select retry from before the last intermission from the menu. Okay. Restart from before the last intermission. All subsequent progress will be lost. What the heck is going on? Is this real, or am I dreaming? Consider this a dream if you must. I'd rather refrain from explaining the finer details. Now then, go forth and triumph. Otherwise... This will become your reality. Alright, we actually got like a fully animated cutscene. So I guess that's what the afterlife looks like. It's a weird virtual room with the mysterious guy in there. Time has turned back for the children. You are now just before the last intermission you played. Now let's retry this intermission. Let's go ahead and advance. To be honest, I don't exactly know what I'm supposed to do differently to prevent that, other than maybe just going home and not uh, triggering the soul cannon to attack on us. Target objective Tyrannus acquired. Now entering enemy radar range. Huh? What's the big deal zoning out like that, Malt? Can you blame him? We're all pretty worn out. Not me. I'm not tired one bit. Oh really? Then why were you dozing off a second ago? Hey, come on, Tattletail. You're all... alive? Should we not be? Man, I know you're tired, but pull it together. We've almost caught up to the Tyrannus. The Tyrannus. We fought the Tyrannus and lo lost. May was fired from the Soul Cannon. Oh, did I actually, like, shoot her out of it? No, I don't remember much else, but I won't let any of it happen again. I mean, I guess it could not because it was like a laser beam. It went on for a while, so it wasn't just, like, one projectile. We have to save May and the others this time. Let's prepare as best we can. None of the other children safe from Malt will be aware that they have gone back in time. Experience gained in the battle before the time slip will also be lost. However, raising the children's affinity and upgrading the Tarascus during the intermission phase will offer greater chances to claim victory in battle and avoid meeting a tragic end. No. So it's basically like, let's try not to die this time. Malt, if there's something on your mind, I'm all ears. I appreciate it, Kyle. Increase the affinity between two children by talking to them. Use Malt to talk to Kyle. I don't even want to think about the Tyrannus going crazy. Let's just catch the thing. Wow, we really bonded over that one sentence. Affinity has increased and improved support effects. Increases attack. Increases damage against aerial enemies. A link event can be triggered. Malt and Kyle's affinity has increased to level 2. The children's support effects in battle will increase along with their affinity. This icon will appear every time their affinity level reaches a certain point. Is it just me or does that not look like an icon? It just looks like like two steam pieces, moving pieces in the background. This is your chance to trigger a link event. Talk to Kyle with the character whose icon is displayed. Well, okay, that makes a bit more sense. So let's go ahead and talk to him. Link event. Okay, this is quite a ceremony going on. All we can do for now is stand and fight, Kyle. Whoa now, where's this coming from? I'm here, aren't I? The army poured over this tank, but no one could get up and running. For some reason, we're the only ones who can. That much I know. Still not seeing what you're getting at here. I'm worried that maybe we're too accustomed to all this fighting. I mean, we did fight in a war and all. I'm not worried that we got good at it. I'm worried that we've almost stopped questioning it. Mm. Don't know about that. Maybe you're just stressed out. <sighs> yeah, maybe you're right. Malt. Alright, had a bit of a heart-to-heart. -heart. Malt and Kyle's link attack acquired. Link events occur when children above affinity level 2 talk to each other. When a link event is triggered, the affinity between children will increase and their link attacks become available in battle. Mm. Seems a little bit like Persona 4 Golden, and something I'm 
pretty familiar with, considering I've been playing it every day. It doesn't seem like any enemies are around, so let's check out the Tarascus a little more. Talking to children or using facilities will consume action points. The remaining AP available during the intermission is displayed at the top left of the screen. Make good use of the limited AP to strengthen both the children and the Tarascus. So, let's see. Let's check out the workshop. This is the workshop menu. You can strengthen the Tarascus's weapons and armor from the upgrade command. Through facility expansion, you can increase the functionality of the workshop and access more advanced upgrades. So, let's go and upgrade. Each ability of the Tarascus can be improved through upgrades. Select the area to upgrade from this menu. So, we can upgrade the machine gun. Specific materials are needed for upgrades. Obtain these materials by defeating enemies in battle or by scrap fishing. Alright, so right now it seems like we can upgrade any of the weapons or armor. Let's see. It says 3 out of 5. Does it cost 3 or does it cost 5? Because it looks like we only have 3, but it costs 5. But that increases it by 25%. This one be 30, so... Let's see. The machine gun, I'm not too worried about the flying enemies. I mean, like, it's not super successful, but I think we'll be alright. Let's go ahead and upgrade... Let's do the grenade launcher, just because we have two enemy, two allies that use that. So let's upgrade it. <laughs> alright. Upgrading was successful. Alright. This upgrade increased your experience. So I can't afford to upgrade it again. Let's go ahead and do the cannon while we're at it. A comrade might come to assist tasks during the intermission. When a comrade comes to assist, the high success rate of the task will increase. The higher the affinity, the more likely a comrade will come to assist. Let's raise their affinity through conversation and other activities. So... A comrade came to help you. Success rate increased by 5%. Okay, cool. It feels weird that you can use material. Like, I'm hoping he doesn't use material. But that'd be pretty rough if it fails. This upgrade increased your experience. And yeah, I mean, we might as well. It doesn't seem like... Oh, well, let's see. Rusty barrel small. Uh, okay. So we do need more of them to upgrade the grenade launcher again. So let's go ahead and not upgrade the machine gun right now. And then let's go ahead expand. So what that looks like. Okay, so just upgrading the workshop it looks like. Yeah. We are not close to level 5, so it doesn't seem like it's worth upgrading right now. And this has a has an exclamation mark, but it looks like there's nothing to do right now. Well, I guess we could upgrade the Machine gun, but like I said, I don't think it's worth doing right now. Let's talk to her. The city of Pharaoh might have gone up in a sea of flames, but I hope its people survived. <laughs> oh, that was a pretty dark sentence. Got some XP. Oh, can you talk with her multiple times? I hope I was mistaken, but I sensed hatred welling in the Tyrannus. I see. So you can basically use four action points to upgrade your affinity with her and also gain XP. Let's try a scrap fishing real fast. This is the scrap fishing menu. Use the fishing rod to snag various items on the ground. Expand the facility to increase the functionality of the fishing stand and access higher difficulty. So, yep, scrap fishing. Choose difficulty. First, select a fishing line and difficulty. The higher the difficulty, the more rare items you can obtain. You will need to expand the fishing stand first. Using higher level fishing lines increases the number of materials you can obtain. However, higher level fishing lines can only be used once. Be careful when you use it. Level 1 lines will never break. Let's see. So, we're going to use old rope. Uh, how do you, like, actually change the difficulty of these? Like, when I hit space, that executes it. But, I mean, I don't think we have anything else to do, like, to modify anyway. So, let's go ahead and cast the line. Oh, uh, okay. Scrap fishing was successful. Rusty barrel and a rusty barrel. One small, one large. Alright, so we gained XP from it. I see. I was kind of hoping there's going to be a fishing minigame so I can, like, 
make it more likely to be successful, but seems like there's that success rate is 25%. That's pretty much it. So let's not use two action points per fishing, so let's move on. Let's see. So we can talk to them too. We just need to sell down. That's what Hannah would say. Okay, it looks like it's going to take four points to level up. Oh, okay. I mean, I was focused on leveling up their affinity, but I'll take a level up for Malt. And then let's see about this guy. Hard to relax while riding around on the bad guy's tank. Alright, looks like four action points as well. This is the mess room menu. By cooking meals in the mess room, all children will receive temporary meal effects. Expand the facility to increase the functionality of the mess room and access more sophisticated meals. So let's see what we got. First, start by selecting a meal for the menu. Ingredients are required for making meals. Let's see. Each meal will always give temporary effects. Choose the appropriate meal according to enemies with stronger devastating attacks. Meal effects last until the next intermission. Since all of the children eat together, these effects are always attributed to everyone. So do, do we also get XP for cooking them? Increase XP acquired in battles by 15%, increase affinity acquired in battle, decrease skill cost by 1 SP, increases attack by 15%, increases critical rate by 10%. So it costs 3 action points to cook a meal, so I don't want to do that right now. Let's see what she does. Oh wait, is she... I see. The mess room is the room I'm in, not the character I'm talking to. So, good to know. We got 9 points left, this is going to cost 3, this is going to cost another 3, so 6, and then 2, so 8, so yeah, that seems like a good use of our action points. Chance to deepen your bond. I wonder how my mother and sister are faring. Let's say... Uh, focus on the battle at hand, let's get the Gasco army to send them a message. Oh, I mean... To be honest, like that, that was like a little bit of a threat. Like, let's use the army to send a message. But it's like, oh, let's actually just send a message through the military. Let's go with that one. It would be nice to let them know we are safe at the very least. And let's go ahead and talk one more time. The more I learn about spells, the more profound I realize they are. So, level of our affinity, increases attack, recovers SP with normal attacks. A link event can be triggered. Alright, get the link event. This big ceremony where we pull the curtain aside. Did your mother teach you how to use spells? She did. Our family has long been adept at spells. I was able to control the no-no without much training. This no-no thing is where spells get their power right. People have to train to use it. Yeah, you might better understand as learn to converse with the no-no. I'm going to say nano. That feels like it makes more sense than just no-no. It seems my mother and I learned to communicate with it, with it without much prior training. Are there lots of people who can use spells? Never saw anyone who could around Petite Mona. There are reasons that may be so. In regions without many spell wielders, some despise our very presence. That's awful. I understand why they might feel certain ways about people who can do things. They can't, though. But yes, because of this, many of us live in hiding, finding communities of those like ourselves. I never knew. Alright, so... I'm kind of surprised he didn't know about how spell treaters get treated, how spell casters get treated. But Malt and Sheena's link attack acquired. So level two with both of them. Let's go ahead and talk to her. Do you think the city of Pharaoh is all right? And let's talk again. Okay, we got a chance here. Let's see if we can choose the right one. Am I still a kid to everyone? Let's say, I think you're more mature is the most, like, complimentary one. So let's go with that. Really? Oh, I hope so. All right, cool. That seems like the correct one. So, increased attack covers HP with normal attacks. Then we got another leak event, so let's see that curtain. There it is. It's been a whole year since we saw each other. Do I still look the same? Hmm, I guess you look a little more mature. Really? Like how? Tell me more. Maybe it's the longer hair? It looks good on you. I knew you noticed. You always kept an eye on me. 
Of course I did. I'm the oldest here, so I have to look out for everyone. But I bet you forgot you were supposed to invite me out to Petite Mona. Oh, shoot. I did promise that, didn't I? Sorry. Breaking promises is a big no-no. You better not forget next time. I'll make it up to you, I swear. Don't worry. I can't be mad after all those nice things you said. I feel like this is a weird kind of, like minor conversation to have while we're about to attack her, like, catch up to our friends in a giant tank. Malton Chick's link attack acquired. Let's talk with him. Boron and Socks and everyone are gonna be okay, right? I mean, am I supposed to lie to the kid? Chance to deepen your bond? I really can't stop pulling pranks. Let's say... You know, I feel like some of them are like, let's be responsible and say like the, you know, responsible thing to say. But I want him to like bond with us, so I guess let's go with because they're so fun. <laughs> Nothing beats the look on people's faces when they fall for it. All right, I guess that was actually the correct response to go with. So another affinity event. That jacket's so cool. It's a it's a Gasco Army one, right? Yeah, I got it from Lieutenant Muscat after the war. She made a big deal about it being some sign of appreciation. That's awesome. You're like the hero of Gasco now. <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened the first game, but did not everyone get a jacket? Like, I feel like we kind of saved the war, or ended it, and then only one jacket's available. I won't go that far. Plus, if I'm a hero, that means all of you are too. I don't know. I think you're our leader because everyone knows you're the real deal. I'm just the leader because I'm the oldest. All of you work and fight just as hard as me. We've been through lots together. True. I guess you and me are war buddies then. Alright. We bonded a bit more. Malt and Hacks Link's Link Attack acquired. So... I don't really need to eat food or upgrade weapons, so... Let's go ahead and talk with Kyle. See how many actions it's going to take to level up again. Dang it. Is everyone okay? Hannah. Okay. It might take five actions, but let's get let's do another one. Oh, can't steep in your pond already? Working hard or hardly working? Let's say Huh. None of these I f I mean it's such a like trope question that's hard to like really come up with an original response to it. But let's say I feel like you don't seem too busy is kind of like a a little bit of a shot at them. Want to trade places? Might be a little bit funny. Same old, same old. I feel like same old, same old is pretty neutral, but I feel like working hard and hardly working is also pretty, like, plain. I mean, I guess let's go with want to trade places, because it's a little more like, there's something there, rather than just, like, a default response. Sure, I'm down, as long as you aren't going to go slack off. Alright, I don't know if I chose the wrong one. Always time for a bit of scrap fishing, yeah? Alright, not quite there. So we're out of action points, let's go ahead and uh, I guess begin assault. It's the bed in the button to continue. So advance. So now we're gonna heal up and then get to the battle. I'm still not quite sure what we're supposed to do differently, but we'll see what happens. Alright, here's our tank. Approaching the target objective Tyrannus, now entering combat range. Finally, the children had the Tyrannus within their sights. The air was thick with tension as they approached the rogue vehicle. What should we do? If we just keep chasing them, this will never end. We mustn't allow the Tyrannus to fire the Soul Cannon. What? What the heck are you saying? Oh, okay, I guess I just gotta do attacks on the Soul Cannon. The Tyrannus is rotating and assuming an offensive position against us. Are you trying to tell me Hannah and the others are going to attack us? Why would they try to hurt us? I think... I'm pretty sure Hannah and the others are being controlled somehow. Controlled? What do you mean? You're right. It must be some sort of spell. None of them would ever do anything like this otherwise. Okay, then who cast this spell? Hey, we got other things to deal with. Incoming fire from the terrain is detected, now activating defensive shields. No way, are they really firing on us? Incoming transmission for the Tyrannus, displaying feed via the monitors. Alright, there's that ominous shot again. 
I've seen all this before. It's Hannah and the others. But I sense something wrong with them. They really do seem to be under someone's control. No, I can't let this happen to May. Huh? What's gonna happen to May? Oh yeah. Okay, so she actually does teleport. Whoa, did May just disappear? The Tyrannus seems to have engaged its teleport functionality. Alright, she's back in the Soul Cannon chair. Look, it's May. Where is she? Could that be the Soul Cannon chamber? They can't. I won't let them fire. Alright, so Soul Cannon, stand by. Loading energy into Soul Cannon chamber. Proceeding with Soul Cannon firing sequence. Other targeting mode on. Initiating Soul Cannon countdown. Okay, five more turns. By turning back time, the children are forced to fight the Tyrannus once more. Hesitate and the Tyrannus will use the Soul Cannon, which will lead to an unfortunate end. Now let's damage and disable the Tyrannus from fighting and try to rescue the children. I can feel May from the chamber. We have to get her out. Dang it, isn't there something we can do to snap her out of it? She seems to be under the control of powerful hypnotic waves. Then won't damaging it from the outside bring her to her senses for a while? Alright then, let's focus our attack and bring May back to us. In order to emerge victorious against the Tyrannus, you will need to utilize all the abilities of the Traskus and the children. Battle tip 1, aim for May's chamber. chamber. Reducing the chamber HP up to the mark will give you a chance to temporarily return May to her senses. Battle tip 2, use link attacks. You can use Link Attacks by setting characters with high affinity at the same gun turret. Link Attacks can be used when the Link Attack gauge of a pair with high affinity at the same gun turret reaches max. Malt and Kyle have a high affinity, so let's use the formation screen to place them at the same gun turret. Even if you switch to another child along the way, the accumulated gauge will stay the same. Bell Tip 3. Use the Managarm. The Managarm is a powerful weapon that can only be used once every battle. However, it uses a small amount of a child's life, so the selected child will be temporarily knocked out. You will not obtain any experience points in the results, so don't use it often. Children who are knocked out can recover from the dormitory using during intermission. Alright, so first of all, let's do the configuration. So get Kyle. Does it have their name so I know who I'm looking at? Yeah, I don't see their name anywhere. But I'm pretty sure this is Kyle, so let's pit him with Malt. So we got a support effect. Okay, they all have support effects. Okay, so the affinity is in the bottom left. So I guess let's put the two cannon people together. And then machine gun by themselves. And then let's go ahead, return to battle. I mean, I can't think of any better configuration, so let's go with that. And then skills. Okay, I don't need to heal up right now. We're currently at max. I mean, I guess we might as well use the Mana Garm at the beginning. Warning, the Mana Garm is a devastating weapon that absorbs the children's energy and inflicts great damage on all enemies. The selected child will be knocked out. Experience points cannot be obtained at the end of battle. Use the Mana Garm. Okay, I guess let's not. Because, I mean, if we're going to knock out a kill, let's wait until the, like, the end of the battle. Save it for the last turn. But let's go ahead and use this weapon, attack the Managarm, or uh, not the Managarm, the Soul Chamber. And then let's do skills, piercing shot on the Soul Chamber. Yeah, not a lot of damage, but at least it reduced the armor on it. Attack on all enemies decreases the armor rank. Yeah, I mean, might as well use it. Okay, so it, it attacks both of them. And guaranteed to hit on the Soul Chamber. Oh! Completely took that out. And then now let's do... Yeah, let's do Piercing Shot on this. Get rid of its last level of armor. An Awakening Chance comes up when the HP is reduced up to the mark on the HP gauge. Awakening Chance can break through the mind control on the other children with the power of words, giving you an edge in battle. Okay, let's see if this is successful. Me. It's me. Your, it's your brother, Malt. 
To be honest, I didn't know they were siblings. He won't listen to me. I wonder if there's something I can say to snap her out of it. Let's say, Grandpa and Grandma are, are waiting back home for us, or I'm leaving without you. I feel like I'm leaving without you is just a little more of a threat, so let's kind of bring her back to reality and mention our family, you know, remind her what's important. Was that good? Mal? Uh, uh, that's right, May. It's me. Interrupt so Okay. May temporarily came back to her senses, immobilizing the Tyrannus. Choose the best option based on the nature of your opponent for a successful awakening. So, let's do... Yeah, let's do Grenade Launcher on it. I kind of feel bad that we, like, prior to her senses, she's, like, aware of what's going on now, and then we just continue hammering at the chamber that she's in. So I guess we'll do Machine Gun. I mean, Piercing Shot, there's no armor left, so... Okay. I was gonna say, if it heals up the Soul Chamber and, like, restarts our progress, I'm gonna be a little bit annoyed. So I guess let's do a Heroic Strike. Okay, actually did a fair amount of damage. And let's do... let's change the layout, see if we can get a... Yeah, I guess let's get two cannons rather than a machine gun. So... I would prefer... oh wait, can I swap this out with someone else and get another... Oh, uh, I guess the affinity is not based on the affinity rank that we have with people, just... I don't know, maybe it's like behind the scenes that Malt is bonded with Kyle, but okay. I think this will be better. We've got two of the yellow cannons, instead of a yellow cannon and a machine gun. So let's get back to battle. There we go. I was saying shift to go back, you have to hit Q. So grenade launcher, or skills, earthquake, three hit attack on all ground enemies. Yeah, I mean, seems like it's more powerful than just a cannon attack. Plus, it hits both of them. Okay. So, another awakening chance. Stop. You're going to hurt yourself. No good. She's not responding. Isn't there something I can say to break the spell? Let's say... I'll save you no matter what, May. Okay. I think that worked. Mal? Uh, that's right, May. It's me. And then let's do... What skill does she have? Yep. Healing up is not my top priority right now. Let's do that. Soul Cannon Armor Recovery Rank. Ah, oh, dang it. I guess I should have focused on that tank cannon instead. What skills? Uh, I guess we'll just do a standard cannon. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and take this guy out. There we go. And then now skills. Oh, I feel like, yeah, we'd have to swap them out to the machine guns to reduce, get more of those. Yeah, I guess let's go ahead and swap it out. Get the machine gun people on board so we can reduce the armor rank. And then we'll come back to the cannons. So, skills, piercing shot. And then, skills, yeah, let's go ahead, I mean, yeah, might as well do a heroic strike. We've got plenty of SP left over. Alright, that does it. So, huh, okay. I felt like the turns was going to be our weak point that I'm kind of surprised we got an S-rank on it still. And Technique, I'm kind of surprised we did not do as well as I was expecting. Or, we did worse on it than I thought we would. Uh, attack that extends the duration of an enemy's delay. And then level up. Still got an S-rank overall though, so that's pretty good. And then... Alright, it stopped firing. Let's close the gap while we can. Hmm, 
What the? Alright, something's happening. Just as the Tarascus drew closer, the silent Tyrannus became wreathed in a bright light. Is the Tyrannus glowing? The damaged guns and hull of the tank are rapidly repairing themselves through some unknown force. Okay, so something's going on. The light that enveloped the Tyrannus spread to the Tarascus, and both tanks were illuminated in unison. Still not sure if this is a good thing or not. Coming into contact with the self-repair field gave the Tarascus some of the Tyrannus' functionality. Limited teleportation access to the Soul Cannon Chamber has been granted. Wait, Maze in the Soul Cannon Chamber? Does that mean we can bring her back here? As long as we maintain close proximity to the Tyrannus, it should be possible. The Tyrannus has activated the Soul Cannon Chamber. Hold on, are they really going to fire the Soul Cannon at us? We're out of time, we need to teleport May over here. Understood, now accessing teleport functionality. The light wreathing the Tyrannus and Tarascus blazed ferociously bright. The glow of the Soul Cannon flared up before fading away. Alright, did we get her back? Oh, she's like floating in midair. At the same time, photons began gathering inside the Tarascus. They teamed together to form a mass of light the size of a child. The light shifted and changed shape, gradually becoming a clearer image. The children called out in disbelief as that image became more and more familiar. What? Look. Okay, someone better catch her. It's... Okay. I felt like she fell pretty high, but maybe she, like, slowly descended. May, May, is that you? I can't believe something like this is possible. As long as May ba is back safely with us, I'll gladly believe it. Yeah, can't argue with that. May, May, I can't believe it. Uh. Hopefully she's alright. Look, she moved a bit. Thank goodness. She doesn't look hurt, but let's get her somewhere she can rest properly. While the children celebrated the surprising return of May, the Tyrannus slowly rotated, turning away from the Tarascus. Look, what's the Tyrannus doing? Hold it right there. You're not getting away. Mass energy consumption during the teleportation has left our systems overheated. Movement will be impossible until energy is replenished. Looks like we're stuck. Dang it. Fine then, we'll catch back up to them before long. Right. We have saved an ally from the brink of death. Immobile for the time being, the children rejoice in their victory. Alright. This seems like a good time to wrap it up. I'm gonna just see what comes up next and probably call it there. Okay, meanwhile, elsewhere. So we're kind of getting to a tangent, so... Seems like a good time to call it, so... That's the first hour, uh... A little bit over an hour of Fuga Melodies of Steel 2. So I'm going to give it a rating. I'm going to go with, honestly, I think relationship material. Like, you know, I'm a little bit lost on some stuff because I haven't played the first game. But the turn-based combat is pretty fun. But more importantly, I think the real attraction here is the story. And, I mean, I do feel like it's a bit of a challenge to be like, Hey, we made this game about kids in a tank going to war. And now the war ended, and now we have to make a sequel. So how do we justify kids being pit in a tank going to battle again? And to be honest, I at the beginning I was like, oh, they like drafted the kids to like be in a tank and go to war again. But the way they set it up, where it's like they get locked into it and they run away and escape and stuff like that, where it's not like it wasn't adults deciding like, hey, let's pit kids in a tank and send them to battle again. It was just kind of like in the moment. This is like. There wasn't time to think, and just the urgency of it kind of helps justify that. So I feel like that story point of like requirement of getting the kids back in a tank to going to battle is something that's not easy to do, but I feel like they actually did it pretty well. And also the kids being possessed, like taking over their minds and stuff like that. It definitely adds like I didn't expect any like supernatural stuff to happen in this game. Even the spellcaster being in the tank was something that was kind of like, oh, okay, so. There's a bit more to it than just, like, 
this is a war and kids are like they found a tank and stuff like that so i do like that i feel like it definitely makes the story a bit more interesting and adds like more depth to it at least more layers so yeah i mean surprisingly interesting and then i'm definitely missing on some like the connection to the character since i haven't experienced the first journey that they went on but even so i feel like while the writing there's not really any dialogue that like blew me away of like oh that was like so well phrased and everything I think the characters do feel pretty, like, I don't know if realistic's the right term because they're anthropomorphic cats, but it does feel, like, grounded. And I feel like each character is a bit distinct, even though there's, like, two kids on there that I confused for the same person at one point. But, you know, I feel like they have some differentiation. It's not just, like, oh, everyone's kind of, like, blends together. And so, yeah, I mean, story's pretty solid. And there's, like, surprising nuances to it. It's a bit more complex than I was expecting. And I'm actually pretty curious to see where it goes. And so, yeah, you know, I think the story, that's really the selling point. The combat is pretty, like, it's not like, oh, you focus on the story, the combat's a bit of a grind. I feel like so far it's had, like, a pretty decent balance that when it gets to combat, I'm like, oh, this is a nice change of pace. And it's not something that's like, oh, you gotta go through this part to get more of the story. So, yeah, pretty good. And the stuff on the tank, being able to talk to other characters, I feel like it's... There's quite a few games that have similar systems, like Persona having the social links, and then Fire Emblem series having where you like you talk with your teammates between battles and level up. I think that's something that's very similar to what this game has. But still, I feel like it's pretty welcome. These are, like I said, the characters pretty distinct. That's nice to see them bond and build up their affinity with each other. And I feel like the game is kind of like a bit more mature than I was expecting. That you have your friends that went on like. This whole thing's going on that's like pretty weird, but it still feels grounded and has an impact. It's not just like, oh yeah, this is kind of silly and that's it. It's like, okay, we actually, I actually feel a bit motivated to like go save them or at least figure out what's happening and understand that story part of it better. And then that soul chamber that like basically drains a person's energy to do a really strong attack is something that's interesting. I didn't expect part of the game to be like, yeah, you can like drain your kid's life's energy to like do a stronger attack to be an option that would come up but i think it's interesting you know it definitely adds both there's some gameplay mechanics like concerns of like oh it's gonna knock the character out and they're not gonna get xp but also story basis it's almost like i don't want to do that just because i don't feel good about draining the character's life energy so it actually gives you a bit of a like a bit of a conflict of is this the right thing to do is this necessary so, yeah, I mean, overall, like, I was surprisingly impressed by this game. So, yeah, you know, like I said, relationship material. I think if you sit down and you're like, I'm going to play this game through to the end and just, like, focus on it, I think you're going to have a pretty good time. I don't know how long the game is, and I don't know if after the tutorial kind of, like, prologue section that we play through, if it kind of becomes more of a generic, like, okay, go through, like, grind through a lot of battles, and then after, like, 15 fights will give you a bit of story or something like that but i feel like what it's shown so far it seems pretty promising that's going to be well handled and well balanced between combat and story and so yeah i mean i think this is a game that i would like i feel pretty good recommending if you're like not feeling the story at all and you just like hate turn-based combat this might not be the game for you but if you're not opposed to either of these i feel like they're both executed well enough that this is a game worth trying out and it's on Game Pass, so I think it's definitely worth the download. With its art style being pretty minimal, I don't think it's a big download anyway. So really no, not much like cost to try it out and see if you like it. I liked it, and so yeah. And also the walking around the tank interacting with people. I did forget to switch between characters to try to increase the affinity between like character... I'm kind of blanking on the names, but like... Instead of being like, let's increase the affinity between like the second and third character, I just played on Malt the whole time because I forgot you can switch characters. But I think that's something that will help give more variety to it. That's not just like, oh, you can bond as one character. It's like, oh, you can have all of the characters bond with each other. So you're definitely going to be wanting more action points between intermissions, which is definitely what you want rather than just like using all of them and being like, well, I got like five left. I guess I'll go fishing. So and yeah. That reminds me of all the different, like, systems in the game to, like, go fishing, craft weapons and stuff like that. It's not super advanced. It's not anything that's, like, makes me want to, like, really sit down, 
write everything out and calculate what's the best use of it. I feel like it's pretty, but honestly, I don't really want to do that necessarily. I just kind of want to focus on doing combat and the story and the story more than the combat. So I feel like it's a good level of complexity that gives you some options to kind of like build around what type of like gameplay combat focus you want to like focus on. But it's not so technical that bogs down the experience and kind of like slows the game down. So yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's not like stories like this aren't really things that like really hit me to my core. Like I love Disco Elysium, like stories like that, just that's kind of like really different and abnormal. But this definitely has quite a few supernatural elements to it that while I wouldn't normally like on the surface, a story based game around anthropomorphic cats is not like that doesn't really do a whole lot for me. But the way that it's written and kind of handles this like war theme with kids, I feel like it's done surprisingly well that it does come off like good writing and a story that I enjoyed. So I think that gives you enough to know my impressions on it and gives you an idea if this game is for you or not. But like I said, I enjoyed it. And this is definitely one of the better games that I've seen on Game Pass recently. So I'm going to go ahead and stop rambling there. But thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Game Pass Speed Dating. There's definitely going to be a lot more games added to Game Pass in the future, so definitely expect to see some more episodes of this series, but thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.